save game review hi everyone and welcome to today's video where i'm gonna be reviewing some more 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 of your save games that's right everyone this is our 16th save game review and the final one for the 1.36 version of EU4. And here we are in game, ladies and gentlemen. And as always, I have some mwah, excellent picks for you today. Some very, very interesting and uh, different campaigns to what we've seen so far. This first campaign is a Charua campaign uh, in 1818, almost till the end of the game. So we're going to be going to a native nation in South America. Charua is located right here. I don't know if I've ever reviewed a campaign like this, but nonetheless, it's going to be super, super fun. Then this next one right here is like a Steal the Spain campaign, which some of you may think is generic but according to this description that the player provided i am very interested in seeing what's going on over there's a heavy heavy focus on uh colonial gameplay with mostly tall-ish gameplay over in europe so i'm excited to see that and then our final campaign of the day is a death martian to croatia the sardinia piedmont to austria to holy roman empire uh sort of modifier stacking and central europe dominating ish type campaign so i'm super super excited to check out all of them so without further ado let's jump into our first campaign right here charua on july 1st 1818 by stefan rangelov and let's see what this player had to say about the campaign and Stefan right here says, Charua game, first time playing a tribe by the way, I did some early expansion, had trouble with tribe mechanics and general outside of your problems. Spain got Austria as a junior partner and was super strong. Portugal expanded into North Africa and was really strong too for 200 years. It was a cruel cycle of Charua being stuck between strong Portugal and Spain, getting dismembered and bullied as soon as truces ended. I managed to break out of the cycle by attacking Spanish La Plata and then the real game starts. I fought England, France, Portugal, Spain and even Scandinavia and some other european nations in a coalition in the end i managed to conquer all of south america and a bit of scotland i consolidate my power and it's 1820 so that's it i have won check out the ottomans the disaster plus super strong spain wrecks them all right we'll check out the ottomans as well so uh yeah that's our first campaign of the day let's jump in all right all right here we are in our uh, charua campaign obviously and it's uh it's looking very very nice let me check out the rest of the world first so we got an independent Canada, Spain, and France dominating North America. Aside from that, Ethiopia is absolutely huge. Portugal is heavily involved in Africa. So are the English. Massive Decon. Muscovy and Perm still existing. Ming blew up. We got the Ottomans not existing. I don't know if the player got involved in that or not. But yeah, I don't think those guys exist. Venice is absolutely huge. We can see the Spanish PU on Austria here. The Commonwealth France. Yeah, Scandinavia too. This is Scandinavia right here. Very, very interesting campaign, man. But uh, yeah, let's jump in. Let me check out this map mode first and see if uh, you actually do own the entirety of South America. I don't think you do actually. Portugal has some uh, provinces right here along with Spain. But uh, listen, let's just call it continental South America. All right. This is Chiro looking very, very nice, man. Obviously, uh, absolutely lovely borders. You said a little bit of Scotland as well, but I actually don't see uh you know any of your presence there unless it's vassals which it is there we go that's scotland probably the only subject and some alliances we'll get into all of that but first let's go into the great powers list number seven on the great powers list this is probably the lowest we've seen someone with such a late game submission but obviously you know that's expected the dev in south america is way less than uh over in europe or whatever perhaps uh all three hegemons active man that's not something we've ever seen venice being an economic one england so not great britain england being a naval hegemon and muscovy not russia being a military hegemon very very strange campaign man i'm liking the submission already uh even uh, just because of the stuff that's not related to Chirua. but going over into the country right here itself we can see that this guy four two three in charge level two two and four advisors uh this level four guy is very expensive man um let's see what the reason is that this player isn't running a uh, level five advisors this late into the game uh going over into the government tab lots of promoted and accepted cultures right here let's see yeah pretty much everything that's in south america is accepted so we're good on that uh max absolutism 49 current absolutism 30 if this was your only goal that's definitely not a problem not a bad idea at all in the diplomacy tab i like to man <laughs> prussia i actually didn't even notice prussia existed uh the commonwealth uh sardinia piedmont venice and new providence all right and then um yeah scotland is the only subject guaranteeing man and new providence maybe attempting to diplo vassalize those guys Guys. in the economy tab we can see that we are making money very nice right there lots of income from gold as well some provinces developed others not obviously there's so many over in the inca regions but as we can see lots of gold provinces have been spawned over here i think 
this one right here and all of these right here have been spawned these are ones that start off at, at the start of the game maybe actually nazca is a spawn one as well yeah it is a spawn one uh yeah so aside from that oh uh, income is looking pretty okay man you obviously you wouldn't expect to make that much trade uh in south america since all of these trade nodes you know sort of run over to um what you call it to other places so you definitely want to control uh trade nodes that are outside of south america if you're planning to dominate trade in south america so i'm not gonna knock this player on that uh it's obviously not uh, that uh you know possible to get uh that high uh what you call a trade income in this region lots of uh maintenance being paid on force man i guess this player really had to defend himself look man all of these forts right here constructed really an impenetrable uh nation right here so if that's what you were going for excellent uh obviously if you're in such a stable position now you don't need them but you know i do like gameplay like this man i do like it uh let's see uh right here the share from trade is 30 percent, which is obviously expected goods produced only 20 percent, which is definitely lower than i thought it would be in the technology department everything is looking legit right here now let me take a look at the ideas quality economic influence defensive diplo quantity offensive religious honestly man i have nothing bad to say about these idea picks uh maybe i'd swap out trade with some of them uh, to make more money but for the gameplay you were going with uh it's definitely looking okay maybe influence is the one you don't need so maybe swap out trade with influence but aside from that everything is looking really nice right here true and ideas are pretty excellent too or maybe not excellent but interesting you guys should definitely check them out in the missions department really nothing to take a look at decisions and policies i think pretty good ones active yeah definitely for what you're going for here stability and expansion under gov cap no rebels whatsoever everything full stated let's see yeah everything full stated so that's awesome right there uh yeah let's see what the, what's the main trade node actually that's something i wanted to check out so uh, which one which one is the main trade node right here is it brazil no it's not brazil ah so here's another mistake man your main trade node is cuiba right here which absolutely sucks you got three exits or actually uh yeah three exits and two entrances uh if you're gonna make any uh node in the you know in south america end node it should probably be brazil or like panama or the caribbean if you have more control over them or maybe yeah, it's kind of wonky to set up here, I'm going to be honest. But um, moving into the religion tab, uh, we are Protestant, interestingly enough. So no sticking with any native um, religions like uh, Animist or whatever Trua starts off at. So, you know, that's uh, interesting to say the least. Tier 2 Defender of the Faith as well. Nice uh, thing he's right here. Church power thing he's activated. In the military department, uh, no professionalism whatsoever. But uh, we do have some pretty nice combat abilities right here along with the galley stuff. Uh, pretty good morale, pretty good discipline uh low army tradition but very nice force limit as well over naval force limit too let me check out the army's combat with this 50 so let me take a look at this army right here so yeah army composition i'm gonna be honest unless you merge these guys so merge they would be 60 with 40 yeah even that's a little too much obviously the armies aren't merged since they're stationed this far apart army composition sucks dog yeah i'm guessing that's why you lost so many battles versus these guys at this point man the 40 combat with with the 20 percent calf combat ability i'd probably be running uh let's see I'd be running 36 infantry, 8 cavalry, or maybe even more, shoot. Yeah, maybe even more cavalry. So 36 infantry or 34 infantry, 12 cavalry, and then 40 artillery, something like that, man. Uh, yeah, definitely very subpar army composition, so a negative on that. Nothing to check out in the subjects and in the estates department. We got the pastors and the burghers. No nobles, I guess, due to the way the reforms were activated. But full crawling ownership and lots of privileges granted to these guys. Everything is excellent right there. Uh, let's go ahead and go into the government reforms. We are an empire, feudal nobility, grant noble castle rights. I guess this is for all the forts. So, you know, for that, it's good. Uh, if you didn't have all these forts, obviously, I tell you to go with something else. Decentralized is good, I guess, for promoting all those cultures. So you definitely had a clear goal in mind right here. Curtail is pretty good for Protestant, actually, defensive stance. Yeah. Stacking all of that defensiveness right there. Parliamentarianism, uh, administrative clergy, embrace the economic theory, social contract, regional legislative houses. Yeah, pretty good government reform picks for what you were going for here, man. Uh, I, especially it's evident with all the forts and the off forts modifiers you were getting as well. Uh, let me check out defensiveness on a random fort, 65%. Yeah, so fort defense, man, absolutely insane. I can definitely see the modifiers that you were stacking. So good job on that, man. Definitely going for a defensive focus playthrough. Obviously, all of these forts have been meticulously built up, and I love the way that even though these army compositions suck, the way that they're stationed around the country and stuff like that, it really helps with the immersiveness, you know? Uh, there we got 50 transports, 50 lights protecting trade, more lights protecting trade, and the 30 heavies right here. So even with the galley combat ability, you don't have galleys, but... 
listen honestly it's not a big deal so yeah uh, i'm liking a lot of the stuff i've seen so far the only thing is i don't like right now are influence and the subpar army composition obviously we took a uh, took a look at the things right here everything is full stated culture is all accepted everything converted and now let's go ahead and take a look at the autonomy which is non-existent uh, has been lowered everywhere let's go ahead and take a look at the dev right now so um yeah obviously this is the capital a bunch of provinces above 30 which is very nice a lot of provinces above 20 but yeah definitely after that man we can see a massive drop off in the dev so yeah definitely a lack of focus on dev right here man if you would have run a higher level advisors and gone with some advisor stacking modifiers and stuff like that you could definitely have dev up a lot more provinces with all of the spare points that you would have had uh in the time that you spent not conquering stuff because there's obviously a big portion of the game uh, where you were losing and stuff like that where you're not conquering that much uh going over into the buildings let's see right now a very important aspect for me marketplaces uh let's see build up and yeah the relevant provinces have them and upgraded uh yes they have and uh, let's take a look at the stock exchanges yes they have been upgraded so everything is good on that front courthouses uh nowhere yeah, but I, I guess you don't need them, too. So, yeah, no big deal. Some universities here and there. Uh, some navy buildings. Yeah, some of these uh, ship force limit buildings as well. Workshops built up in, uh, yeah, most of the high, uh, high trade good provinces. But obviously, there's still a lot to be built in. You know, these coffee, these salt, these gem provinces. Even these uh, wool provinces, they give you more than 0.2 ducats. They have also been upgraded, which is very nice. Although, you could upgrade a lot more, as we can see. Very high value trade goods right here. Uh, let's see some uh, what you call it training fields uh, a bunch of conscription centers that's very nice uh, a ton of churches upgraded as well and let's see the forts they are level eight forts which is very nice and uh, yeah manufactories too so pretty good job on the buildings not a 10 out of 10 but i would say an 8 out of 10 or something like that mainly because of the production buildings you could definitely bump up your trade with that so everything is looking legit right there as well take a look at the parliament right here not a lot to take a look at here obviously it's just the parliament man so uh yeah everything that we've seen so far i am liking quite a lot and i do think we did check out everything like i said my only complaints right now uh so far are the influence ideas uh the army composition and really the fact that you could even with south america being such a poor region trade-wise and everything uh i do think you could be making more money here man i really do think you could be making more money but aside from that let's go ahead and jump into the timeline right here there is charua let's go on speed four and um for the first 50 ish years man we really have nothing to see it's just a migration uh, here and there until you get to pass all of those government reforms uh maybe this player flipped into a horde and thing and stuff like that uh you know to get control of all the provinces or maybe uh the player reformed off of a neighboring um nation let's see but yeah i do think right now it's uh it's looking like the nation is actually one nation not a tribal one anymore so there we go the spanish are already present man this player is expanding into the incan guys a little bit there we go more expansion here Ooh, big losses big losses coming in from spain and even the incan guys i think man so i love it when players you know take massive l's and just continue to play man it's really uh a lot better than just alt f 4 and stuff like that so i do recommend you know taking your losses on the chin so to say and continue playing because you never know how it could turn out but yeah a very long period of stagnation right here man tiny wins tiny losses obviously the colonizers are encroaching the portuguese and the spanish but there we go big war versus peru right here so now it's looking a lot more stable but there's another l versus peru so more guys popping out over here yeah you really got to be quick when declaring on these colonial nations man you got to be quick to where the you know the overlord doesn't have time to jump in and stuff like that but yeah man look 200 years of gameplay and it's really still a massive massive struggle man the only thing is helping out are like the gold mines and stuff like that right now there we go even a bigger loss Ooh, I, there we go there's that major win versus spanish la plata that we were waiting for that kick started the whole thing getting the provinces back another loss right here actually so yeah man definitely you know we can see the skill level of the player and stuff like that but i'm actually loving the way these borders are developing with the losses and the wins such an interesting campaign that we haven't had so far there's like the free state of native a what well, i don't even know what that is man uruguay right here popping up what is even going on in this campaign there we go uruguay and brazil are gone there we go all the portuguese guys are gone but then we got to blow up maybe a loss in a coalition right here but once again reconsolidating taking everything from the europeans and now just a couple of native nations left to conquer uh there we go those guys are gone only quito left in south america 
and uh, I think those guys are about to be wiped out pretty soon. Maybe they are a subject. We didn't take a look at anything what was happening in the rest of the world, how the Ottomans blew up and stuff like that. But I was just so focused on, uh, you know, what was going on right here, man. It was just so interesting seeing all the you know like an actual war map the border is changing and stuff like that so man i we haven't we really haven't had a campaign like this super super fun it was very enjoyable to watch this timeline especially to see how everything developed a uh, very entertaining campaign man very entertaining if there was a video of this campaign uh, i don't really watch you for videos almost ever on youtube i can't remember the last time i watched one but uh even though i make them uh i would totally watch this thing man i would totally watch this thing so even with all the negative things i told you which really weren't that much the influence ideas thingy and the uh, army and the economy thingy uh, this campaign was just so entertaining to me that i have to give it a five out of five good job i want to see more stuff like this i want to see more stuff like this let's move on with the next one all right let's jump into our second campaign of the day this castile to spain seemingly regular campaign but like i said at the start i was most intrigued about what this player had to say about this and uh you know let's take a look at that right now so boar right here says castile to spain gameplay chill run mainly went for the forever golden achievement although i got five others colonial heavy a lot of colonies uh only expanded in eu for the missions i needed somewhat tall run as i built my country and subject heavily this is my first run in which i was achievement hunting and i'm very proud of it as it stands so uh continuing along with the theme here of uh maybe players doing something for the first time or maybe less experienced players or something like that but uh yeah let's jump into this castile to spain run on uh, july 1st 1629 all right, all right, here we are in our uh, Spain run right here, and uh, honestly, I can say that I expected a lot less expansion um, over in Europe, so to say. I, I thought, you know, we'd have all of Iberia, maybe, you know, southern half of Italy, maybe the Netherlands or something like that, but uh, yeah, obviously the country is a lot bigger than I thought, babe. We have the entirety of Great Britain right here, entirety of Iberia. Uh, the first negative thing I can actually notice is uh, almost no expansion in the Maghreb, which honestly I do think is pretty important for a Spain run. Lots of conquests over in France, pretty much owning the entire coastline, even though France still exists, and of course owning the entirety of the Netherlands, which is always nice to see. But aside from that, let's go into the diplomat mode oh and we can see the subjects here too we got milan as a vassal austria and hungary as a junior partner so obviously force pu these guys after austria already got a pu over hungary but zooming out even further i'll get to the colonies in just a minute but yeah definitely not a lot of expansion in the uh, in the trade company regions or what i like to call them basically the ivory coast cape of good hope zanzibar uh and anything you can get in india and southeast asia primarily malacca the Moluccas and the Philippines, um, Gujarat, Deccan, Coromandel, and Bengal. So we'll see, uh, you know, if that's a negative or not. But moving on into the new world, finally, man, we can see that Spain pretty much almost owns uh, or owns almost all of the, uh, you know, North and South American continents. I do see some little straggler nations here and there, such as, uh, you know, the Acoma Federation waiting for the truce to expire. Yeah, all of these guys. So, you know what? I'm not even going to consider these guys because, you know, it's just waiting for the truce to expire and you wipe them out. But yeah, aside from that, the entirety of North and South America in uh, colonial nations. All right, we'll jump into the specifics of that later. First, let me go into the Great Powers list. Number one on the Great Powers list and an economic hegemon, my personal favorite. So everything is excellent right there going over into the country view right here we can see carlos the second i don't know what dynasty that is level five four and five advisors which is absolutely awesome going into the government tab lots of cultures promoted and accepted english being the most um what you call it the most developed i guess culture you could call it uh going over into the diplomacy tab yeah we can see all of the call wait uh, i saw bavaria what's bavaria maybe attempting to diplo vassalize them but yeah we can see the colonies and the other subjects here florence is a vassal as well didn't notice that earlier very nice right there in the economy tab making very very nice income very nice trade efficiency by the way obviously most of the income coming in from trade that would happen as uh as spain and uh, a gold mine developed which is always nice to see moving on over in the trade tab about a 30 or 40 percent coming in from trade which could be a little bit higher but you know 40 to 50 percent is pretty normal depending on how developed your production is and stuff like that almost 40 percent goods produced very nice in our golden era as well uh in the tech department ahead of time in every single tech and in the ideas department obviously exploration expansion trade quality economic very good some might say that trade is redundant uh when you already get so much merchants and stuff like that from the trade companies from the what you call it uh from the colonial nations but what i say is lean into that whole trade thing even further man 
the the you know the merchants are the lowest bonus you can get pretty much from this idea group but all of those modifiers come in very very nicely with the other things that you're going to be picking as spain as well so yeah even though it might be considered redundant and really having no point in taking it if you want to max out those things even more i do recommend it so i like the idea group picks definitely probably similar to what i would pick in my spain campaign in the missions department obviously for forever golden you got to complete the entire mission tree so that's a chef's kiss from me right there and in the decisions and policies we got some nice ones active right here but uh yeah uh definitely this one is one you want to activate these right here not that necessary honestly spain's military is pretty powerful under golf cap which is very nice to see pouring some stuff up right now uh that have been conquered in uh well this should be somewhere down here or something like that but yeah not too much to take a look at right there in the religion tab obviously catholic 99 percent religious unity very nice auto conversion on including subjects so that's dope right there here for defender of the catholic faith and uh, in the military department very nice professionalism pretty good combat ability for these guys very good morale for 1629 actually that's pretty strong pretty good discipline as well massive force limit and uh combat with this 32 let's take a look at the armies 34 10 honestly for playing versus the AI, not bad i'd run uh, more cannons at this point in the game because you're after you know tech miltech 16 but uh you're already strong enough to beat everyone so even though it's not optimal it's it's really not that bad when you fight the ai pretty nice generals as well moving over into the subjects department let's sort by subject type so we have uh the colonies right here yeah what i wanted to take a look at was the trade company so we got the guinea trade company yeah everything's here yeah it is trade company very nice obviously this would probably be stated as well and there are things over here which i didn't notice right off the start my bad so expansion has started in this region if you kept going with this that's excellent i do recommend continuing to focus here since you've already wiped all of north and south america so quick you got about 200 years of gameplay left to go where you could literally gobble up you know this entire region that i mentioned right at the start or even uh, continue with your expansion over in the coastal trade nodes of africa so i'm liking these trade companies quite a lot and yeah, all of these are the colonies, uh, very low tariffs, which, uh, or no, actually, the tariffs are pretty high. I, I usually play with tariffs that are a little lower since they're not really a big part of your income. But uh, yeah, nothing bad to say about that. Oh, now here we have some bad things. Let me take a look at this. So absolutism does exist. Uh, 94 max absolutism. You are, I guess, uh, starting to max it out. But uh, listen, you're not doing a world conquest, man. You didn't really have to take away uh, these things from the estates. And we can notice by how unhappy they are that the stuff was rapidly taken from them. So you can definitely give them back, man, all of the monarch point privileges uh, if you don't want to go with anything else. Although I do think you could run. You know, your current absolutism, uh, if you're going for specifically what I mentioned, I know this campaign is done, but let's see, I was continuing it. 60 is plenty good, man is plenty good you're not doing anything wild so i'd rather give some privileges to the estates as well so that's a, a negative thing right here that i would mention uh and yeah so far this is a negative thing and the not focusing here more because really the secret is as portugal and spain and the rest of the colonizers if you could say france or great britain or something like that is to focus on the old world first man that's where the real money is right all of your first explorers and stuff like that and your colonists you should gone for getting to indonesia as fast as possible then north and south america are really a secondary uh, choice right you're gonna do it either way but your main focus should be in africa and india and in southeast asia so yeah that's another Another negative thing so far along with the estates and the slight negative comment that i have on the force limit but listen if you did your goals then who am i to say anything good or bad so yeah that's taking a look at that man let me go into this once again so yeah everything is looking very very legit right here everything that you see that is yellow is a trade company i guess this uh, is gonna be stated pretty soon right normandy yeah so coring stuff up this was a recent war as we can see versus brand so we're chilling right there uh going over into the production interface taking a look at autonomy let's see it has been lowered everywhere that i can man so good job on that uh going over into the development let me see that right there um so toledo's been dev up quite a lot london all of these very nice provinces above 30 dev lots of them above 20 as well lots of them yeah above uh between 10 and 20 so that's pretty good right there so yeah i guess you could call this a tall ish run uh, not really but yeah you know the dev on the provinces that need to be dev they are dev so that's pretty good uh going over in the buildings department pretty important for spain uh marketplaces built up in so many provinces 
You could probably stack them up in these two, but do you really need it since you have that much control over Sevilla? Not really. I guess it depends where they are. They have been upgraded, which is very nice. Courthouses present almost everywhere. That's awesome to see as always. Uh, going over into the workshops. Yeah, workshops are being built as well. But look, look, dude, you don't have workshops in the clove producing provinces. My God, man. Now that's taking away some points just for that. Yeah, look at all of these high value trade good provinces, man. The cloves, the paper right there. Uh, silk, sugar, all of these right here up until the iron. So yeah, definitely uh, I, there has been a focus on workshops, but come on, you got to do this immediately. Maybe they were recently colonized or conquered. So maybe I can't say too much about that. But yeah, that's definitely a misstep. Church is right here not that many you could build a lot more have they been upgraded uh no they haven't so you're gonna want to get to that if you need to manufacturers obviously being built everywhere that they can make sure to stack them up here and stack them in your subjects as well man when you're this rich as spain or as any colonizer portugal spain france great britain you want to build everything in your colonies as well rich colonies equals rich you so don't forget to focus on your boys as well super important look just put one down in lima bro it's that simple look at all these modifiers that you get over here Ah, uh, absolutely perfect but yeah definitely focus on building these things in your colonial subjects as well as for what you have it's looking pretty good in the government reform staff system of councils right here the unique one right here state uh strengthen all approaches representatives is great for subjects land for the church obviously we got the tercios aristocratic court dynastic exploitation six books regional representation everything is looking excellent right here so that's a pretty good run right there aside from some of the negative things that i uh you know that i didn't like uh, Spain is one of my personal favorite nations, so, you know, I, I obviously I'm reviewing this in my playstyle, right? And, and not to say if I say this is a 1 out of 5, uh, or a 5 out of 5, that that's objective. It's not. It's completely subjective. But, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty good run right here, man. I just wish you'd focus here a little bit more. But I guess, you know, for the achievements, you don't need to do that. I don't know. Let's go ahead and check out the timeline right here, obviously, uh, going on this speed, uh, starting off by conquering Granada, the basic first step. By this point, Air Aragon and Naples may already be subjects we really don't know. Oh yeah, another negative thing that I wanted to mention and there's no expansion in the Maghreb. You definitely want to eat up Safi and Tunis. But there we go, we got uh, Arguin right here. We can't really notice any wars over in Europe, although Burgundy may be a subject, but I don't think it is because it still existed right at the start. Took the coastline from Morocco. Colonization has started over in the Caribbean. So yeah, that's pretty much... Oh yeah, early wars versus France too. I can notice Gascony here. They're probably a subject. So yeah, uh, the thing I'm most interested in is the super rapid colonization, man. Nothing is pretty much owned by Castile here, but we, we are going to see it being owned in just about 100 years. Massive expansion in New Spain, colonization over in Africa, more growth over in Europe. Already started the conquest of the lowlands. So yeah, the colonies are definitely starting to form. Yeah, I guess because of the weird names uh, and maybe if some of them were Portuguese subjects, we can't really tell right off the bat. And because they have these uh, weird colors, which aren't the colonial nation covers, they're like colors sorry there are different ones but yeah everything is looking really nice right here colonization conquering the natives fighting some wars in europe there we go britain was a junior partner obviously i just noticed that right now apologies if i missed it earlier and there we go a pretty short campaign when you take a look at the timeline man barely 200 years and um honestly i'm really satisfied with what you accomplished in 200 years but uh you know some of the negatives right here that i would do in my campaign i just uh i just can't give it a five out of five but very very nice spain run man uh i'm gonna give this uh, a four out of five let's move on with the next one all right let's jump into our final campaign of the day this death march into croatia to sardinia piedmont to austria to holy roman empire run by a bud budl budulini yeah uh november 11th 1744 exactly 300 years of gameplay let's see what this player had to say about this campaign and uh budolini here says i united the central powers with a little extras as husite peasant republic hre where i started as death merchant on the way from croatia sardinia piedmont and austria the unification of the hre was done by bringing liberty aka conquering everyone and releasing electors in free cities my second goal was to stack as many goods produced modifiers as possible and to create an economic powerhouse did i succeed I guess we'll have to see. All around a pretty chill campaign where I almost didn't even wage any wars in the last decades, so it can be done way faster. I can recommend a similar campaign, although I would dissolve the HRE if you don't want to go for the meme who said communist HRE. All right. Uh, I guess this player formed a who said communist 
HRE. Let's see what that's all about. All right, all right, here we are in our Holy Roman Empire campaign. And uh, right off the bat, I can tell you guys I'm absolutely digging the borders, man. Very clean borders. Uh, obviously, this player has like all of Italy, all of the Germanies. Uh, Carpathia, right? Yeah, most of Carpathia, the low countries, uh, Poland. Uh, and uh, what are, what was this? What's this right here? What are these guys? They're client states. They're client states. Okay, yeah, very interesting. But yeah, the borders are looking super, super clean, man. Uh, lots of guys angry. Oh, even even possessions in South America. What's up with that? I gotta I gotta keep talking about the borders, man. They're just looking so good. But let's jump into the what this run is all about. HRE number one on the Great Powers list. Six thousand six hundred and thirty-one development. In exactly 300 years of gameplay looking super super sweet and i guess you uh you know did achieve your goal of becoming you know the ultimate economic powerhouse you're an economic hegemon as well which pretty much uh signifies that uh going over into the country view right here we can we president v wenzel von schwaben already then <laughs> level three five and five advisors looking very nice right there bump this guy up as well or maybe you know there wasn't a guy with an accepted culture although there just was i just saw one uh, we're a uh, federal republic obviously uh, 31 max absolutism obviously you wouldn't have a lot of max absolutism because you're a republic and stuff like that but you know you don't re even really care for that in a campaign such as this obviously all of the german guys along with some non-german guys accepted and promoted going into the cultures right here yeah a lot of italian and uh you know carpathian basin guys not accepted right here but uh really it's no big deal in the diplomacy tab the ottomans are the only possible rival allied to castile and russia so yeah pretty weak castile right here pretty powerful russia i guess with the help of russia you could take down these guys if you're going for that even but uh, yeah I, I, honestly the borders are too pretty just don't touch them and uh revolutionary vestlich mark is a uh, client state so that's like west i don't know what mark means and then we got the east mark right here the south mark and the north mark all of these guys client states sort of uh you know protecting the borders and stuff like that which is uh cool from a role play type scenario in the economy making a ton of money right here man look at that income from production and trade absolutely insane so much trade getting sucked out of the english channel even with no possessions uh in the new world and even with um well actually your control is pretty good for just owning the netherlands i gotta give you that but uh yeah everything's awesome right here gold mines we have three all of them have been developed obviously the austrian the czech and the hungarian ones so those are looking very very sweet right there excellent economy man excellent economy in the trade department 45 percent income coming in from trade which is honestly pretty strange to see uh, for a nation located in central europe but i guess when you have dominant control over genoa venice and the english channel all of the end nodes you would sort of expect something like this even though you haven't expanded uh you know uh what you call it upstream from them and stuff like that 220 percent goods produced uh that's that's just bonkers man really that's really that's the main reason why these uh incomes right here are so insane so excellent job on that man i absolutely love it in the tech department 100 enemies ahead of time in every single tech and for the ideas we got espionage pluto trade quantity infrastructure economic religious obviously uh all of these ideas right here are to maximize the economic capacity of the country with uh, all of these other ones sort of acting like supportive ones uh, along with giving very very nice um what you call it policies that we're going to take a look at right now such as this one for provincial trade power the goods produced one more goods produced more goods produced in global trade power and then an army one let's see if you can activate any more yes this is something you want to get active right away along with this one right here and um yeah this one is actually pretty good too so yeah you're definitely missing out on two economic ones man that plus 10 percent and trade and production efficiency on top of what you already have along with the tax even though it's irrelevant it's probably gonna bump you up to like 3k so just by activating those uh no need to take a look at the missions man they're just the hre missions uh way under guff cap funnily enough even though i'm guessing these provinces are extremely highly developed which we're gonna take a look at pretty soon and warsaw is being uh cored right here I'm guessing it was uh, conquered recently from whoever existed there. In the religion department, we are Husite, obviously. That's right. A Husite communist HRE, everyone. 110% religious unity. Nothing left to convert except for Warsaw. This is the religious map, which is looking super, super nice. Even some stuff in South America is Husite, as we can see, which is uh, weird. I don't know if the player took these on purpose or not, but uh, it doesn't even matter. In the military department, man, 100% army professionalism. Obviously, no combat modifiers based on the idea groups that we've seen a very very good morale a very nice army tradition decent discipline as well huge force limit and the combat with this 40 let's take a look at the armies right here 48 20 
yeah yeah honestly once again for fighting di you don't need that much more cannons so combat with i can say is almost perfect aside from the cannons right there that you want to build like 20 more of in the subjects department we just got these four um what you call it client states surrounding the holy roman empire i guess those are you know to get defensive and stuff like that so maybe the player has plans to grow uh these guys you know to cover this entire border and to grow these guys to cover this entire border if the player is not planning on expanding uh, you know himself any more than this in the estates tab we just got the clergy and the burgers obviously since we're communists but um yeah still privilege is active for them man even with such cry high crown and ownership everything is looking dope right here lots of bonuses and along with the not using absolutism you could even give them more stuff you know like the i don't know cheaper advisors or uh what else would you need here religious diplomats or a cleric education or something like that but yeah everything is looking really nice right there let me take a look at the states and territories obviously everything is stated vienna is the capital as we can see so everything is super nice right here oh i didn't even notice you got iceland and greenland very nice <laughs> and even some stuff over in africa that's definitely something i didn't see so yeah everything is legit right there now let's move on to the autonomy oh there you go that's where you can lower it just kidding that's really not a big deal at all going over into the uh what you call it into the development let's take a look at that right now so vienna up to 80 development really really strong torino up to 50 siena lots of provinces over in italy as well a bunch of provinces above 40 super nice a ton of provinces above 30 wow that's a lot of provinces above 30 and um yeah so many provinces above 20 as well so development definitely has been going on especially with the idea groups that you've picked and uh, lots of provinces between 10 and 20 as well and um, very few honestly poor provinces what i would consider a poor province uh provinces with less than 10 dev at this point in the game obviously you know 10 dev at the start of the game is like huge but uh yeah the only one you really could develop right here is oh wait here's something i'm uh, i'm noticing your coal coal mines man they really haven't been developed all that much let me see now that's iron right there where's the coal there's the coal right there so yeah a lot of these that could be developed that aren't but really it's it's really not that big of a deal you know it's it's not as relevant as gold but still something you do want to do so a little minus on that going over in the buildings department marketplaces done i guess trade depots completed them mate <laughs> uh stock exchanges as well so everything is perfect right there courthouses everywhere along with town halls they have been upgraded production buildings everywhere county houses everywhere literally everything that has been built or everything that can be built ladies and gentlemen has been built so literally nothing negative to say about the buildings either excellent run so far man I, and i'm loving the whole role play aspect you know uh, definitely unusual runs that we've seen so far and maybe this is the most experienced player we've uh, had today here one government reform peasants republic obviously republicanism frequent elections head of the reform church uh, sustained discipline attorney general admin divisions lakin proviso consolidated power more principle maybe this is a weird one that i would swap out but uh, that's what this player needed needed citizenship appointment by committee reinforced republican values everything is perfect right here yeah very very strong man very very strong run now let's go ahead and jump into the timeline to see how this game developed uh keep in mind that when we have so many formations of countries you know what this player say like death march in croatia sardinia piedmont austria hre uh it may be sort of strange to look at on the timeline and we might not get the full picture but let's try let's try there we go let's run on fast so there's death march and immediately conquest into verdun and some of these small guys right here so everything is uh uh you know easy to see right now and let's see how this player is going to form croatia so it looks like the player is actually beelining it to croatia which doesn't exist anymore took the gold mine from death march and early war versus Denmark, I guess, didn't ha they didn't have strong allies. Slow and steady expansion in the first 50 or 60 years in the North HRE. There we go, pushing further into the Central HRE. Man, this is rapid conquest, and I can notice that the HRE still exists too, by the way, probably, as the player said. Uh, obviously, you know, if you form the HRE, it does exist. But yeah, wow, I, I really thought we'd be Croatia by now, man. Almost 100 years have passed, and the player is still gobbling up uh, the minor, you know, HRE guys. There we go, finally, a war versus Austria dismantled them. Croatia has been released. I guess their provinces maybe are being reconquered or something like that. So maybe once they're annexed, this player will flip to actually Croatia. Let's see, we're still death marching. Uh, if the player was at this point Croatia, I guess we're not seeing that. Uh, yeah, continuing the conquest over in the HR, we can notice subjects as well. Uh, there we go, death marching still. Maybe at this point, the player is Sardinia Piedmont. Actually, I do think you need a couple of these provinces. So and there we go. Now we got provinces over here and further expansion in Italy. Uh, some minor HRE guys left. We've already passed like 200 years. 
uh yeah more expansion over in hungary in the ottomans in italy um th there we go yeah so we actually didn't see on this timeline when the player formed croatia and then sardinia piedmont uh but we do get to see when he formed austria so yeah that's why the timeline is a little wonky there we go now we're the hre continuing some conquests versus any minor guys that are left we got bohemia lusatia and like already the client state being active some of these guys are, I guess, free cities or electors or something like that, or junior partners or vassals, doesn't really matter. And uh, that's pretty much where the game stops, I guess. Yeah, I guess now the, some other client states will be formed. And I guess it's just been lots of chilling for the past couple of years. And yeah, we didn't even get the full picture at the end because, yeah, the timeline is wonky when you form so many nations. So yeah, didn't tell us too much, but nonetheless, it was still fun to look at. Honestly, man, awesome run. Didn't really have anything too negative to say about this. Loving the borders, loving the role play, loving the communist Kusite Holy Roman Empire, uh, the subject states, and obviously the absolutely amazing economy. Very, very cool run right here, man. When I take a look at your guys' runs, it, uh, it literally makes me want to play the, the same campaign, uh, which obviously, you know, your campaigns are that suited to videos. But uh, if I was playing uh, for my own personal enjoyment and in my free time, I'd definitely knock out a couple of runs like this, like the ones we saw today. Charua, Spain, Peasant or Communist Husayd HRE. All of them have been super, super lovely. And I'm also going to give this campaign a 5 out of 5, just like the first one. And that's been all our save games for today. But yeah, there you have it, man. Those were our save games. This is the final batch of save games from 136. I know I said that last time, but I wanted to slide another one in. Uh, 137 is releasing very soon, Winds of Changes, stuff like that. So, you know, after it releases, I'm going to give it a week or two or something like that. So you guys can drop your 137 save games and we can finally jump into those and take a look at everything that you guys have been doing in the latest patch. But yeah, very cool save games for today looking forward to the next batch in the new update and as always you know if you want to submit yours drop them in the save games for vid discord channel i'm not going in order i'm just picking the ones that seem the most interesting to me drop a sentence or two explaining your run and what you did and uh yeah that's pretty much what helps me pick these but i think that's all i have to say about that so yeah if you enjoyed this video don't hesitate to leave a like it really helps out a lot and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them and you can become a member today and join the discord the link is in the description thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time with another eu4 video